Three, two, one, go. Hello. Welcome to Tomb of Annihilation. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Derek. <laughs> uh, I've been practicing my singing. Yeah, it's pretty good. That was all me, by the way. I don't know if you could tell. That was that was all just me in my natural voice. I thought it was all the gods inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've been working on... They've formed a band, like some kind of spiritual barbershop quartet. <laughs> oh my god, I love that idea now. <laughs> <laughs> uh character for uh tenacious D, &D like one body four four gods but they're like a band and they sing in melodies all the time and it sounds like that possibly just like vocode, <laughs> vocoder that shit and yeah could be could do could do did you ever see uh it's called shattered crowns arcadum campaign I um, one of the yeah, I mean, I've what? seen people recommend it, and I never did like watched anything. All oh, right, yeah, one of the characters is an undead. He's a vampire bard, and whenever he gets excited, so like if he's getting low on blood and he's like talking to somebody and trying to resist the urge to bite them and drink their blood, he uh, he, he switches into that like whatever you call it, vo vocoda or whatever. Yeah, vocoda. I love oh. that that D&D &D show. <laughs> oh, you're not watching Shattered it. Crowns is so good. Nice. Uh, what is up, Jelly? Hello. Hi. Uh, how was your, your game on Saturday, I suppose? Mm, yeah, it was good. It was cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. I wonder, you How know... are you liking your monk? I'm loving my monk. <laughs> <laughs> Just like got to level three, so I can use my key points and stuff. Oh, now. nice! Which uh, mm -hmm. what subclass did you go for? Uh, I am a wood elf hmm. and a shadow monk. Oh, yeah, I went all shadow, all shadowy. All shadow. What are shadow monks? What, what can you do? You get um, oh, fuck, I can't remember what it was now. You get some, I think you get um. Pass without trace. Uh, darkness. And there's another oh, yeah. spell that you get. Um, I can't remember exactly now. <laughs> You're testing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what do you get at level seven? Once I the, don't uh... have memory <laughs> skills, Derek. You know this by now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've fun. mostly played. Uh, I love monk; it's my favorite class. You guys might know this. Yeah. I've mostly played way of open hand, just because oh, I think yeah. you get the knockback thing or something. You can like things have to make a strength save or they fall over or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, there's one where you can throw can fireballs. The uh, yeah. elemental yeah. one seems pretty good. You know, yeah, I, I always torn thought between the elemental one. Yeah, I always Sorry. thought the the like. Um... Oh my god, I forgot I forget the name of that subclass, but the one where you get to like throw Hadokens. That one. Which Sun, is like, Sun Soul? Sun Soul, yes. <laughs> Play Dragon Ball Z pretty yeah, much. <laughs> that one's cool, yeah. <laughs> it was just like I, I always wanted to try that one, but like I never did. Even now like And then there's do... Kensei. See not only is Monk the coolest class, but it also has the coolest subclasses. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I was, I like literally made a second backup character who is a, oh, by the way, Derek, how fine would you be with a human wizard who's, um, like, well, whose book or spell book is just his skin and he just tattoos in, like, spells? Oh my god, I'd be so fine with that, that sounds awesome. All right, I'm so that is that. my second what? backup character. Now go kill Graeme and Olog. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of, well, it reminds me of Prison Break. Did you ever go watch that? Is it a Boomer TV yeah. show? I mean... And he had the, the escape plans tattooed all over him. Like, the thing yeah, is, yeah. I watched, like, little bits of it, but just, like, I don't remember shit about that show. 
<laughs> Nor do I really, but I just remember he had the this gate. He had like blueprints to the prison tattooed mm -hmm. on his back, and that's how they escaped. Spoilers, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think at this point, like, it's probably fine after all these years. Prison Break. Guesses for when it came out? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, is it? I mean, it must have been <laughs> after 2000, though, right? <laughs> okay, I don't... yeah, that's, yes, that's warmer, warmer. <laughs> okay. Bang on, Jelly. Yeah. <laughs> 2005. My goodness. Jesus. So <laughs> 15 <laughs> years ago. Wow. <laughs> it, it finished later than it. It finished 2017, if I was reading that right. I closed yeah, it Yeah, they tried to kind of bring it back, but it didn't Oof. really work. Oh, so they had... Oh, right. So they had one season later than the others. Mm -hmm. mm, aren't they about to do that with Dexter? They are, yeah. <laughs> I don't hold out much hope for that. I, I never watched the end of Dexter. I missed when it like did you really because it got really bad, right? Right yeah, towards did, the end. Yeah. It was shockingly awful. The last episode, especially. I, I still have fond memories of Dexter. It's like mm -hmm. I am trying to think because I know I we have like four guest DMs for Tenacious D and D, right? And now I'm just like sitting on it. And I'm like, yeah, we have Jam, Josh, Dave, and I'm just like. Who is the fourth one? Oh god, I'm gonna start sweating. I'm I forgot who the fourth one is. <laughs> I think the oh. two you mentioned to us already were Josh and Jam. Okay, have you heard and about I... Dave? Them Dave. Uh oh, I maybe caught some of your prep stream actually, like caught it and then muted it and ran away because I didn't want to have spoilers. Yeah. Uh Four, you're really outsourcing the campaign, I so. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's it's interesting to do that, actually. Like uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay, my goodness. Maybe it was free. Maybe I'm just like imagining things. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's it's just like I I just like uh, you know, having other people and seeing how they DM and just like we're, we're just doing a different thing and then it's like a fun campaign why not bring like friends right <laughs> absolutely yeah that's a cool idea mm. speaking of cool friends I saw the uh, trailer just a moment ago on your on your channel it's good, you're doing it? uh your it's it's really good it's awesome uh, so um, Josh is running a Call of Cthulhu one shot that you're playing. Yeah, Do you yes. have a character yet? Yes. <laughs> Just yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just yes, indeed. Um, no, like what I have is Andreas Haag, who is a Dutch person. In apparently, I did it completely by accident, but I went. It's like Singapore 1950, right? I said like Dutch person. And then it turns out there was like tension between the Dutch and Singaporean people in that time. <laughs> oh. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. I also like immediately made sure that um, I am, you know, an apprentice to someone in the group so I'm looking forward to being exploited as a young bright-eyed fool <laughs> I really misheard you then I thought you said exploited as a young bride I, like, I, mean, I wouldn't be opposed <laughs> if they ask then he's not gonna say no <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> That's a fun character type, definitely. It's still like a, um, I guess it's what's fun about playing a dumb character or like an inexperienced or like a naive character. Mm -hmm. it's like you might know stuff. It's a good way to stop yourself meta meta gaming and like figuring out stuff too much. And uh, you can yeah. it gives you a really good reason to kind of bump your character into stuff in the game. 
Yeah. I'm really looking forward to playing that game. And like, I talked to the group, except one person, because they couldn't make it. And like, it's just a cool bunch of people. I'm just looking forward to spending time with them. Okay. I'm currently like deleting transitions for the start scene of TOA because that messed up a thing earlier. <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. How you doing, Big Philly style? Yo. Feel like dropping a few bars? <laughs> My name is Philip, but I'd like to say I like playing Tomb Annihilation in a major way. <laughs> a is a, a solid choice of uh, ending syllable. We got a lot of rhyming choices with A. Yeah. Like, uh, um, uh, uh, um, nay, ne and say, and uh may je jelly help me out <laughs> say Ray. hey lay whoa rap god <laughs> <laughs> i saw this awesome <laughs> meme of uh it was like rappers in the 1990s and it just had this this rapper doing some sick bars and then it was like rappers in 2020 and it was just like the sesame street gang <laughs> and they're going cat Bat, <laughs> rat. <laughs> that is like amazing. Oh my god! That's but like great. really early rap was kind of like that too. It was like, my name is Steve, and I'm here to say, <laughs> this is rap, and I'm rapping to the beat. Yeah. And people were like, whoa, that is incredible. How do you yeah. do that? Yeah, a hip, a hop, a hip, a hip, and a hip, and a hop, and a bang, bang, the boogie with the hop. It's like to the rhythm of the boogie the beat. And you're just like, oh my god, this is. This is yeah. Now, what you hear is not a something. Tests. I'm, I'm rapping, rapping to, to the, the beat. beat. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> And then you've got people like Ghost Man who just, I mean, don't, don't fuck around. <laughs> and Eminem, who's just a literal rapping machine. Yeah. You yeah. got a present, you need it wrapped, send it to Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap. I'm literally just working on transitions to make sure that it doesn't mess up again. <laughs> I'm thinking about changing my backup character again, just oh, because okay. I've got a cool idea. Yeah. You're glad? Cool idea. But I said mad, mad lad. lad. Yeah, oh, mad okay. Lad. <laughs> okay, that makes more I'm sense. Glad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great probably, probably timing because I have some news for you. Aldrig fell down a pit and there was a bull rug. Bull, bull rug? No, that's a. Bullfrog. Bullfrog, Bullfrog. no. Bullfrog. Uh, bulldog. <laughs> There's a bulldog. <laughs> oh, I love like that a idea. Bullrog. It's like a balrog, but like with a bulldog's face, like a squishy, a squished up pug face, but just the body bull of a rug. bullrog. It's a, it's a rug, but it's a bull. Yeah. Yeah. A bullrog. Hey, Estady. Hi. Hello. How are you Hello. doing? How is your ball rugs? Um, they're sleepy. <laughs> oh. They they won't be joining us today then. No. Oh. Well, uh, wish them good night from me, okay? Okay. Uh, did you just wake up, by the way? No, I've been up for a while. I'm just tired today. Okay. Which is unfortunately my normal Friday. And yet, it's my long stream day, and I've just tacked another stream at the end of it. Oh, God. This is oh, my life. My <laughs> what are you going to be doing today? Um. So I ha after this, I have Subnautica Below Zero. Right. And I also just last night got a review code for Monster Camp, which is the sequel to Monster Prom. Nice. So nice. I'll be doing that after my Subnautica stream. Wow. Wow. Yeah, when are you been... playing um, World of Horror? I haven't been, but I've been watching Bixley play it. 
No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, when, when are you playing World of Horror? Oh, I feel uh, like when someone buys it for me. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> How much is it? Uh, I, don't I don't know. know. It's like 10 quid or something. Mm, okay. I think it's more than that. It might be 15. Well, I'm just going to put that on the list of potential gifts once I get a pay. <laughs> <laughs> It does look cool, though. I've I've been enjoying watching people play it. It's really cool. There's an artist who does all that kind of style, but I can't remember what his name is. Like... Oh, I know who you're talking about. It's yeah, a it... Ito style. Yeah. When I was saying before, I was all the bits. I was like, I love this game because it's like actually just what my nightmares are. Well, there you <laughs> like, go. <laughs> yeah. Not, at least someone understands. <laughs> so. Yeah, just I, weird, I don't like... know the game or the artist. What, what do you mean? Like you dream in black and white? No, like um, you just like dream about normal stuff, like normal mundane stuff. But then like you'll you'll be having a conversation with someone whose head is like three heads stitched together with the mouth <laughs> slit, and you're oh, just like, man. this isn't normal. This is definitely a dream. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna drop an image Derek I know you're squeamish though quite yes thank you <laughs> I know you were so... bitch but I'm gonna drop some image right now I'm, I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna keep it as you're, a link so your, your dreams are crazy because you aren't squeamish because you, you ingest this stuff through your eyes and then it gets regurgitated in your dreams my mind is, is full of Fa 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 fairies and flowers and, and what have you. So if jam, you have jam, problem, jam sandwiches. If you have a problem with holes, don't click on that image. Whoa, that's yeah. horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oof. Oh that's, yeah. That's Junji Ito. That's a. It's not his most famous thing. Um, his <laughs> most famous thing is basically, um, this mountain that is covered with these people shaped holes and there is a hole for everybody and when you find your hole that's clearly shaped like you, you it's there's a visceral knowledge that that is your hole and then you have to enter it you are Good. compelled to enter <laughs> it <laughs> And okay. as you go through it, it slowly like contorts and twists your body until you become a monster when you come out the other side. What the fuck did I just want to come back to? That's fine. I didn't need to sleep for the next month anyway. So great, nice. I th I think you would love the game, Dirk, but I just think you would have horrific nightmares, like literally every single time you thought about playing it. Like... <laughs> uh, that's cool. That that's exactly the type of horror that I like. Actually, like. I've, it impacts me a lot, so I guess that's why I find it uh, cool. Psychologically, it's terrifying, which I love because I hate yeah. jump scares more than anything. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, I, I will, I've walked out of films before because it's, uh, oh, we're playing this game. Jump scares, is it? No. And I'm out here because, like, the grudge. I hate the grudge. I thought it was awful. And um, Insidious, I thought that was awful. And Paranormal Activity, that was awful. Just anything where it's like, oh, build up, build up. Oh, 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 got you scared. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not scary it's, at all. It's like, cheap. Yeah. I, I yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. Uh, speaking of loud noises, question mark. I'm just going to drop some more horrible uh, art. <laughs> nice. And by oh horrible, God. I mean it's good art, but horrifying. Yeah. Okay. Um, I shall look at it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> In daylight. Um, but that's that's the this is my whole. Uh, that's what that's referring to. So. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. That's Especially that last cool. one. The last one it's... didn't load for me. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Saved. Saved. <laughs> Saved as in like that's another one for the folder of really creepy no. art. <laughs> no, the super scary one. My internet saved me by not loading it. All oh, right, okay. It's not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's just a it's... poop with a sad face. Look, it, it, it's it just cool, sad. <laughs> it's not scary. It's just kind of like viscerally horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it speaks to that part of your mind which is like fear of the unknown like why is this here i don't know i'm terrified of it run like <laughs> well, I, for me it it speaks more because it's more 
the idea that something like that could happen and the way that it contorts the human body in just kind of like a way it's not supposed to go. Speaking of contorting the human body in a way it's not <laughs> supposed to go. There Shall you go. <laughs> <laughs> I opened the link. I've got the whole comic thing here. This is pretty cool. All right. There you go. The word and everything. is yours. Um, Phil, would you kindly do the honors? Last time on Tomb of Annihilation! <laughs> the obscure murals in the tomb of Kubazan provided scant clarity on the offerings the great frog hemoth expected, and an offering of chicken bones made in earnest triggered the rising of a group of whites, eager to drain the life from our heroes as Graeme, Ava, and Helby were simultaneously transformed into frogs. Battle commenced with most of our heroes hopping about, trying to use their puny frog brains, trying to understand what was happening, and rem remember how to undo this moist amphibian curse. Frog Ava slapped Frog Graeme with her tongue. Graeme then stabbed Frog Ava, and Frog Helby suffered the necrotizing drain of the White's deathly grasp, and all were returned to their normal forms, just in time to prevent Aldrig's untimely death. Ava then heaved open the locked sarcophagus, triggering a trap which fired coloured beams of magical death, all the colours of the rainbow, at all in the room. Our heroes miraculously survived, Helby managing to succeed a one in ten chance at resisting the magic of the beam as it tried to warp her into another plane of existence, possibly for the rest of her days, avoiding an end to her both her quest and her friendship with Vossi well before their time. Two of Ava's zombie minions were not so unfortunate, however, and their lifeless bodies now fester and rot in obscure and perhaps undiscovered corners of distant worlds. On picking up the magical archery braces that were inside the sarcophagus, Helby was possessed by the spirit of Kubazan, a turn of events which drastically boosted her strength, which now exceeded all of the following creatures. A saber-toothed tiger, a polar bear, an ogre, a centaur, a warhorse, an ox, a giant constrictor snake, or a frickin' griffin. Venturing on, the group found a room filled with various obscene tapestries, depicting scenes of a banquet, each successive tapestry showing the scene devolving further into depravity, carnal acts, vomit, murder, blood. Graeme was sent fleeing from the room, charged with magical fear, but Aldrich pressed on, steeling himself to resist the magical effects of both the tapestries and what lay behind them, a giant severed head of a boar, fangs enormous and razor sharp, dripping with gore and dangling viscera. Resisting the malign influence of the boar's head, Aldrich scanned for treasure and turned to leave while he still had possession of all of his limbs and extremities, at least for now. Let us do character recaps, as is tradition, um, commencing with Ava. Hello, I am Estaini. I am playing Ava Windreaver, half-orc, Tempest Cleric of Istitia. And I'm, I don't have almost all of my undeads anymore. I'm so sad. Scattered, maimed in this plane and others. The, the the biggest loss was definitely the cat. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree. I, I don't even want to play uh D, &D anymore because he's <laughs> <laughs> But Bugboo comes back or I don't. <laughs> uh next up, Aldrig. Uh hi, I'm Phil and I'm playing Aldrig. Um he's a warlock, celestial pact. Yes. <laughs> next up, Helby. Hello, I'm Jelly. I'm playing Helby Unique Aero, who is a Beastmaster Ranger, Forest Gnome, and she has a companion Velociraptor called Vossi. And finally, Graeme. Hi. Um, it's not sure I'm going to be playing Graeme, who is a red skinned tiefling, a rogue, a physician by trade, and uh, fairly recently, a. well. Um, she was uh, granted some divine attention by a god known as Gond. 
So, uh, last time you had just arrived at this hallway, um, which has a layer of water along the bottom. I'll start with Jolly Old Detect Magic. So, Ava, the um, curtain of water, there's like a... I'll re reread the box tech in a minute, it text in a minute, but there's like a curtain of um, solid almost water there, which is radiating magic of... Uh, conjuration school um, and you actually detect some illusion magic yonder also oh, okay. Um, you also hear the magical words of your um, illustrious DM reading the box text ringing in your mind <laughs> still puddles of water cover the floor of this 15 foot wide hallway the walls are slick with moisture and set with murals showing animal headed humanoids in armor most of which appear to brandish real weapons hanging on the walls a three-foot-high crawlway on the east wall is flush with the floor. At the far end of the hall, a rippling, transparent curtain of water fills a stone archway. Beyond the curtain, you see another hallway that looks similar to the one in which you stand. Okay. What do you do? Um... I want to inspect that illusory wall. Okay. So, um... This is a statue of a hawk-headed female warrior uh, holding nothing, <laughs> unarmed. Um, and there is a, kind of an illusory bit of wall like between her legs. She kind of stands um, feet shoulder width apart and the wall behind her legs is illusory. So I, I go to kick it, and there's no wall there. Indeed. There's a kind of alcove back there. Um, um, can I fit in there? You could clamber into it. It's quite small. Mm. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I found an illusory alcove. It's a bit small for me. Okay. Would I mean, you I like to check it out? Sure. You... <laughs> All right, I'll step to the side. Good luck, don't die. <laughs> so, Helby, um, it's a few feet off the ground, so you're going to have to hop up and climb your way in. I'll definitely give her a boost if she needs it. Yeah. Oh yeah, she'll I, I definitely. Can't, I can't move forward any. Yeah, you. Um, it's a very small alcove. You can just kind of, once Ava gives you a boost, you can just kind of hop oh, in. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like a big <clears throat> cupboard on the wall. Oh, okay. A few feet up. Inside is just one thing, Helby. Um, there is a crystal purple eyeball one inch in diameter okay uh ava there's a crystal eyeball in here that's strange should i touch it or not um i stick my head in the alcove if i can yeah okay uh is it enchanted your head or the alcove? Either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the alcove, you said the only, the only magic in that area was the illusory wall. So the alcove and the crystal eyeball, both non-magical. It's not enchanted, so I can't imagine there would be any harm in taking it. Okay. So she's going to pick it up. You do so. Mm -hmm. Could you please kindly mm -hmm. mark on your character sheets in your inventory that you are carrying one purple crystal eyeball? Sure. Okay, I got it. She hops back down again. All right. Um, if I look at these statues, you said that many of them are holding real weapons, except for the one here. Are any yeah, others so, not holding weapons? 
Um, so let me get my ruler out. There are oh, hold on. Yeah, there are twelve painted statues in this hallway. So six on each side. Um, they're in pairs across from each other. And from south to north, uh, there are as follows. Stork-headed males with hand axes. Um, Liz, so they all uh, have, like, animal heads on humanoid bodies. Okay. Um, and then lizard-headed females with maces. And then panther-headed males with blowguns. And then the hawk-headed females that were unarmed. And then goat-headed males with sickles. And just to the north of you, frog-headed males with tridents. Um, the unarmed ones, do they look like they're supposed to be holding something? Or is it that their fists are like your weapon? They look like badass monks. Okay. They look like they could, they don't need weapons. They could beat the crap out of a bullfrog if they wanted to with okay. their fists. They are the weapon. Um, yeah. I guess I turn back to Graeme, who's at the little crawl space. Um, I've already drawn my, my long sword, um, because of the warning that we got, walk through water with weapon in hand. And I say to Graeme, so do you think we should check the crawl space first? It's possible that we may need particular weapons. I think so. It, yeah, it, it's very... <laughs> All right, I would then. just like to explore before we charge into a magical something. <laughs> well then. Great. And uh, I will start crawling in and okay. checking for shenanigans on the way. If I <laughs> yes, please make a shenanigans check roll. <laughs> Okay, you don't detect any shenanigans in, no in the crawl any space. Traps, any... No, no traps either. And <laughs> you think the traps in this place are deadly? Wait till you see the shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> so, Grammy, there you see a small chamber. Seems um, pretty undisturbed. Like there's a thick layer of dust on the ground. There's not really any um, adornment or decoration in here. Hmm. Well, um, I, well, I think I will closely inspect the walls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Just in case. Yeah, okay, go for it, yeah. 21. So these walls are roughly hewn from the um rock of the mountain that this whole place is built um into the face of mm -hmm. and already that's a little unusual in terms of rooms because most of the okay a lot of the corridors are also like rough rock uh but a lot of the rooms in this place are you know decorated in the hideous style of this place humanoid suffering you know um mm -hmm. scenes of murder and depravity yeah uh this Any place, poisonings? it almost looks... Sorry? Any poisonings? Um, yeah, you can... Uh, th there's a few... Um, hold on. And I'm joking. You don't need to actually answer. It's fine. <laughs> no, no. Um, so there's... Um, there is some kind of slime, actually, on, on one of the walls. Um, which looks pretty nasty. There's like a trail of like semi-dissolved rock just above where this slime is dripping. Okay. Uh, I will, like, look back at Ava and then hold a vial in front of me and turn around and try to get some slime. Yeah, so you can collect some. Um, a cursory glance with your trained eye reveals to you that um, to turn this into something useful, you would need to do some processing, some alchemy, but... Um, yeah, you've you've obtained a, a sample of this kind of uh, 
fearful looking sludge. I feel like when Grammy goes through that with the, the, the glance back at Ava, it's just like this low warning rumble of Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> but you just go into it and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wrote it down as fearful sludge. <laughs> <laughs> I've got actually I've, I've got some names for these things and they're quite similar to that I've, in fact I might steal fearful sludge that's good I like that <laughs> <laughs> all right but this one it has a different name that when you process it it's successfully you are uh... sludge <laughs> sludge of terror <laughs> so uh as you cast your eyes around the room um just before you notice this fearful sludge you just generally got the impression that this place is almost unforgot um unfinished almost forgotten just because of the complete lack of like decoration or apparent purpose hmm. shall we go on we should at least see where this leads All be right. careful let me know if you need me to do another investigation roll by the way no, no. You, you let me know if you want to. <laughs> All right, fine. I will, I will closely inspect for traps and other shenanigans that are waiting our toes in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my goodness. Okay, you don't detect um, any unfamiliar shenanigans. There's this weird kind of purple sludge down there, Grammy. That looks like if you poked it, it might fire laser beams at you. <laughs> Yeah, I will, um, like, move away from it immediately. <laughs> what is this thing? Two balconies face each other over a vast pit. Between the balconies hover five wooden platforms, each one a disc ten feet across. A single torch burns above each balcony. On the east balcony stands a rough-hewn, fifteen-foot-tall statue of a hulking fiend with furled wings and clenched fists. Set into the wall on the west balcony is a rusty lever in the up position. Hmm. Uh, give me one second, I'm googling long jump. <laughs> <laughs> if only we had someone who could fly. <laughs> well... Uh, a number of feet equal to your strength score. Um, yeah, I could just jump this. If I, if we need me to. Uh, hold on, can I move? Can I jump this? No, that's too far. You can you can jump this though, and then this, right? Oh, I can't see that far in the dark because I'm too far back. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I can definitely. There's one here this. and one here. Yeah. One here. Yeah. So if we need me to, I can jump my way across it. It just seems like I might get trapped. Yeah, I'm just going to, like, look over the railing. What is below all of this? Uh, a deep pit. Um, looks about exactly 60 feet deep. Um, well, oh, uh, Ava, the, sorry, the platforms are radiating abjuration and transmutation magic. Okay, um, yeah, I think as soon as uh, I get um, within range, because I can see this one specifically. And the statue is radiating um, some transmutation magic from both of its fists. So yeah, I think, Grammy, you see me, like, stare at one of those um, platforms, and then I turn and I, like, stare at the statue, and you can tell, like, I'm sensing magic. And I say, well, it seems the platforms are magical. At least that one is. Also the fists of the statue. Fists. Um... Okay. Uh... I will, like, pull out a single ball bearing and just, like, look at Ava, look at the platform. Um, I take a step back. <laughs> right. Then I would like to throw a single ball bearing on top of this. Okay. Uh, I don't think you would be likely to miss from there. So yeah, you um, arc one up into the air, and it lands with a little clink. 
on the on the platform <clears throat> it rolls off the other end but it yeah it hits the platform the platform stays there and then the ball bearing like rolls into the pit i think if we want to investigate this further we may need to get the whole group here well i don't recall anything in the warning Okay. About pillars, though. So then the question becomes Do we walk through water with weapon in hand, or do we send me across these pillars? There is like stairs on the other side. Yes, yeah, so you can barely see them. And also. A lever, and also, uh, Ava points like right up here. Another crawl space. Though that, I assume, something terrible may come out of it. Where, where is it in the wall, actually, Derek? I can't tell if it's supposed to be in the top of the wall. Like, is it is it raised up or is it like at the bottom of the pit? Good question. <laughs> because uh, the way that it's drawn, it looks like it's at our level. I believe that is the correct answer. Just let me check. Well, it could be there is something we missed on the way here. Uh, that would be the exit. So the, the platforms on both ends, including the one you're on, and the floating discs and the crawl space are all at the same height. Okay. Oh, we should go back and inform the others of what we found and make a decision together. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be doing this alone. And my token is okay. It was stuck for a second. <clears throat> so I think we see Ava come out and dust herself off and start explaining what's on the other end um, while Grammy follows. And she's just like, oh, there's a long chamber at the end of that with floating discs. I think I could jump them, but they're, they seem to be enchanted. There's also a statue, and its fists are enchanted as well. well it could I don't be, know what we'll find there. It could be that the discs are enchanted to float, obviously, but we don't know. It was abjuration. I need to Did look we? up my spell. Did we investigate the other end of this corridor? The enchanted waterfall that we're supposed to pass through? The one I'm standing in. Um, that is where we came from. Let me oh, move myself down. Let's just take another look. It looks like I think there was a dead end. Right down here. <gasps> oh! Um, Helby, there was a... There was a crawl space that opened up just on the wall there and then beneath it was a 60 foot drop so please be careful okay i think that lines up to where i saw the crawl space on the other side she's gonna crawl in and have a look i feel like there is just this little thing of like after you oh Ahead of you, the face <laughs> of a snarling minotaur is etched into a sheet of iron that bisects the crawlway. Its eyes have been cut through, cut out, letting you see through the sheet, beyond which the tunnel continues onward. Brady, can you see this? Well, I... not really. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Minotaur. Should we maybe get Ava in here to have a look to see if she can detect any magic on it? 
Okay, and it will like crawl backwards. <laughs> um, Ava. Yes, I'm coming. There, there is something, like a, a niche, something in there. You know, you still Can have you your eyes. see if it's a magical eyes. thing? <laughs> Certainly. All right. Is it enchanted in any way, Derek? Um... No. No. Okay. Um... Could I crawl up to it and, like, make a perception check? So yeah, I know totally. Weird about it. Mm -hmm. My eyes are good not just for magic, but for looking. <laughs> 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 the old-fashioned way um so yeah you notice that the sheet could be pulled up there's like a mechanism it can be lifted um you notice that the bottom of the sheet of metal is quite sharp um and there appears to be some kind of spring loading mechanism um in the upper parts Uh, she she turns back because she sees Helby is behind her and she says well it's not enchanted but it's certainly some manner of trap I assume there's some mechanism perhaps a lever or something we could use to raise it but bottom of it's very sharp okay if we were to do that I would want to break it in some way so we can assure that it's not going to come back down on us and cut off a limb okay um it's still can you, knowing can... what I know from the crawl space can I estimate that this is gonna come out on the like where I saw the other end or is that not something I can tell? Am I too turned around? Um, uh, you can make a um, survival check. It's going to be very difficult I'll to, go get, for it. to get precise information. You can get a nah. gist for sure. It's, <laughs> it's in the same sort of direction. Like you were heading, well, it's westward mm -hmm. in both, uh, both areas. All right. So yeah, she comes back out. Um, make sure that Grammy understands what she found. So, and can you not, like, uh, move rock or something to, like, brace it? Um, do I have access to that? If I must... Oh, it's one possibility anyway. Yes. That's if we can move it. Well, I did not try to lift it. I didn't notice any traps on it. I think it itself is a trap. It could also be blocking something else from coming to us. It's hard to tell. My suggestion, and one I don't quite like, is that we walk through water with weapon in hand and see what happens. Okay. She's just like shaking her head as she's walking towards there. She's just not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's always the option of getting Aldrich to blast it open, right? That is always an option. Um, did I hand... I think what I the... handed Gak a javelin or something. Um, yeah, you did. You gave him some kind of weapon. anyone else's map suddenly just a... just blank? No. Okay, I'm, I'm going to reload then. Okay. That's because you died. You, you just died. It was a stupid <laughs> The fearful sludge exploded in your in your pouch, in your backpack. Yeah. 
So yeah, I think Ava is going to walk forward. Gak is going to follow her. And she's just going to try to walk through. She has her long sword out. Does she have her long sword out? You know what? No, F it. Long sword is put away. She's got a hand axe, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she's got one of her hand axes out. Just in case this water turns out to be horrible.